I've been a couples therapist for 34 years. Um, I think it's an, an incredible unit to study the couple. They are a lens into the world we live in. And we live in a world where on Facebook we are viewing the best of the best. We are looking at a world through filters. And what do you think that does um, to this idea of the relationship and people being open? When it comes to technology, it's an added layer. Fundamental human needs don't change. The need to love, the need to touch, longing, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. What technology does today, it, we are living the age of promiscuity. It's very clear. We have way too many options that we can absorb. So we live with what has so commonly been called the paradox of choice, which means we love the freedom of choosing, but we dread the self-doubt and the uncertainty that comes from not knowing when I'm making the right choice. We talk about how technology can make us lose our empathy, right? How clicks and swipes and sometimes... And I'm trying to do the opposite. You seem to have, um, in, in true fashion, tried to turn the table a little bit, and your, your latest project, this audio series, is trying to use uh, technology in a sense to build empathy to let us hear other people's stories so could you tell us a little bit about uh, the audio series and um, and what we can expect yes. you're honing in into the story of one couple in a three-hour therapeutic conversation that I have with them which follows the model of the way I work with couples in general what kind of stories will we will we hear oh stories of unemployment and stories of women who ask will you love me if I don't give you children and men who ask will you love me if I don't provide for you and stories of infertility and um, stories of sexuality and sexual deadness um, and breakdowns of desire so it actually um, she's pulling back the curtain on, on the, the things we just don't talk range about of what we don't talk about but what many of us experience in one form of another and I knew that it was wrong and I tried to justify it in my head a lot of different ways but but I didn't stop it. Is the point to, to give us a window uh, into someone else's life? Is the point to uh, let us try to understand relationships in a more nuanced way? The most important thing is that you think you're listening in on others, but you very quickly realize that you're standing in front of your own mirror and that this couple may even be giving you the vocabulary, the language for conversations that you may want to have. These couples today are often very isolated. Most people don't know what happens behind closed doors of a couple. You've said that. you said that oftentimes in couples in today's society, everyone's on an island. Yes. Yes, because, you, because that conversation between two people, m most of us have never heard. It's not the affair that hurts, it's the betrayal that somebody else was more important. I didn't want people to see the people that are being interviewed in the session. If I don't see you, I probably hear you better. But when I hear you better, I see you better. And you can't judge when you see somebody. You, it almost takes away this ability for us to judge and say, well, that couldn't be me. I hear you and I see me.